Winter solstice is finally here, and Christmas is coming soon, which means that the weather is getting colder, at least if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. So I think it would be an appropriate time to look at some snow-themed and winter levels in video games. I've always liked this level theme, the theming and aesthetic are always very nice, and it puts me in a wintry or Christmassy mood. Sometimes they can even have the right amount of challenge involved with them, as they can have ice physics or the risk of freezing by frozen enemies or frozen water. In this video, I will be looking at what I consider to be the best snow-themed levels. There are many great winter or snow levels in video games, so it was pretty hard to determine the ones that were best for me. All of the ones that I chose stood out amongst the others and were definitely very memorable. So without further ado, sit back, relax by the fireplace with a mug of hot cocoa, and let's take a look at the best winter levels. I know this might be a bit of a controversial pick, but Shiveria from Super Mario Odyssey was actually pretty memorable for me. I know it definitely isn't as good as some of the other kingdoms in the game, but I feel like it's still pretty good, and is definitely a great winter level on its own. It's basically split into two different areas, with an icy lake on the top and a town below it. I really like this structure, as it allowed the developers to make each area visually distinct, which is partially what makes this area memorable. The top area is basically what you would expect from a winter-themed area in a Mario game, as it has snowy platforms, chilly water, and even little penguins. This area is a fun culmination of past Mario winter levels, and has some elements of both Mario 64 and 3D World's winter stages. They even introduced a new enemy here, the Bite Frost, which is a snowy version of the Sandmarg. Below the surface is what makes this kingdom memorable. There is a cute little Scandinavian-inspired town with seal-like creatures inhabiting it. The music in this area is pretty memorable, and I like the designs of the buildings in this town. In the center of the town, there are also paths that lead to various secret levels that you go through to progress through the main story. It almost reminds me of the progression of Mario 64, but on a smaller scale, since you have to play through the bonus areas in order to get the Bound Bowl. The Bound Bowl is another fun aspect of this area. It's basically a racing minigame where you bounce along the sides of the track using a Shivarian. While well, Odyssey Snow Kingdom may be considered one of the weaker kingdoms in the game, it was definitely still pretty memorable for me. This next level is from a game that released fairly recently as of the recording of this video, and that is Pristine Peaks from Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. This game has many areas that are overflowing with personality, and Pristine Peaks is no exception. In fact, I consider this to be my favorite area in the game. Similar to Super Mario Odyssey, it starts out in a blizzardous wasteland that's hard to navigate, but eventually becomes a calm winter wonderland once the storm is cleared. This area is filled with charm, as there are many eye-catching background elements and an outstanding score by Yoko Shimomura. The background is filled with cool references, such as the ice skate from 3D World, along with many Christmas decorations and rabbits doing their usual shenanigans. The side quests are also great, and the one that stood out to me was the one where you search for the baby penguins. It was a really cool throwback to Mario 64, and the fact that you could even throw the penguins off of the cliff is great. Finally, the Winter Palace is the dungeon of this area, and it contains a lot of cool puzzles and contains the boss Midnight, which is one of the most memorable bosses in this game. Overall, Pristine Peaks is a very memorable location that has a lot of charm and energy that exceeded my expectations for what a winter level could be like in a game like this. Kirby 64 is generally pretty creative when it comes to its world themes, and Shiver Star is definitely one of the most intriguing winter levels I've ever seen. It starts off fairly normally, with a couple standard winter themed stages that you would expect to see in a Kirby game. This includes a fun sequence where you ride on a sled with Waddle Dee, and a colorful cloud themed level. There's also a really nice rendition of Butter Building that plays in this area that is definitely worth a listen. After this, though, is where things take a very different turn. 
The next stage is an abandoned mall, which still retains the winter theming, but is much different than the other two stages thematically. Then the realization kicks in that this is not like any other winter level. In the world select screen, Shiverstar appears to be Earth, but frozen over, which heavily implies that this is the frozen remains of a human civilization. While Forgotten Land would later revisit this concept, it's definitely a pretty interesting and dark theme to see in a Kirby game. Well, not that dark considering that the demon spawn of a final boss that this game has. Moving on to the next stage, things start to get even more weirder and interesting as it takes place in a factory. This stage contains many hazards such as crushers, conveyor belts, bulldozing robots, and giant hammer machines. This is one of the craziest and action-packed levels in the game, and it's definitely one of the most memorable levels in this world. Finally, there's the boss, which is a giant robot called HRH that transforms into different shapes and fires missiles and lasers. The background of this area is also really cool since it takes place in a futuristic city at night, and it definitely seems to be inspired by the futuristic aesthetics of the late 90s and early 2000s. Overall, this world definitely goes farther than what you'd expect to see in a winter level, but that's what makes it so interesting. There's many occurrences going on. Was this caused by dark matter? HRH? Or something else entirely? This place is very unique, and is definitely my favorite winter level out of the Kirby franchise. Super Mario Galaxy also has its own creative take on a winter level with Freeze Flame Galaxy. I know there's also Shiver Burn Galaxy in Galaxy 2, but I feel like Freeze Flame Galaxy is more iconic and handles this concept better. Basically, one part of this level is ice, while the other part consists of lava, so it's basically the Miser Brothers of Mario levels. This gimmick really works well, since it switches between the two themes and incorporates both ice and lava making for some great level design. In the first missions, such as the frozen peaks of Baron Burr and Freeze Flame's blistering core, it highlights the ice and lava parts of the level separately, but then combines the aspects in the third mission. This level also makes use of the Fire Flower and Ice Flower, which work differently in the Galaxy games compared to the other Mario games. They're both limited use, and they incorporate them in a way where it makes the platforming and puzzle elements of this level very fun and engaging. For example, you can get the Fire Flower on the lava side of Freeze Flame, and then light up torches on the icy side of Freeze Flame. This level introduces the skating mechanic of the game, which makes it easier and faster to traverse on ice, but is also harder to control. The Ice Flower makes use of this mechanic as you can skate over water and lava, creating a trail of ice. Overall, Freeze Flame Galaxy is a very well-designed level, and it definitely pushed the boundaries of how a Mario winter level could look. Banjo-Kazooie often goes over the top in terms of level theming, which is why the levels from the original game are so memorable. So instead of a normal run-of-the-mill winter level, they've made Freeze Easy Peak a full-on Christmas-themed area complete with a Christmas tree, presents, and a lot of snowmen. The area before you enter the level is even themed after an advent calendar, which adds even more to the Christmassy vibes that this level gives off. The centerpiece of this level is a giant snowman, and it contains many of the missions that are located in this area. All of the Chiggy missions are very fun and memorable, as they allude to different Christmas or winter-themed activities. One includes cri guiding Christmas light bulbs to a Christmas tree, pushing buttons into a giant snowman, finding Christmas presents for the polar bear cubs, and sled racing against Boggy as a walrus. All of the missions here are very fun, and this level basically feels like a video game equivalent of a Christmas cartoon special. On top of the gameplay and visuals, the music is great here. Grant Kirkhope knocked it out of the park here, as this song definitely gives off a lot of holiday vibes in the classic Banjo-Kazooie style. The characters also add to the Christmas and winter theming, as the area is inhabited by friendly yet rivalous polar bears, sentient Christmas lights, 
as well as a walrus. Overall, Freezy Peak is definitely one of the most iconic winter-themed levels across most 3D platformers due to the Christmas themes and all of the fun missions. The final winter-themed area in my favorite is the Shiver region from Paper Mario 64, which is where Chapter 7 of this game takes place. You start off at a town called Shiver City, which is inhabited by penguin-like civilians called Bumpties. When Mario enters the town, the inhabitants assume that he is a murderer, as the mayor of the town supposedly died. After a bit of detective work and some help from Herringway, it turns out that the mayor penguin was just knocked out from a falling box and wasn't actually dead. The first part is a fun spoof on murder mysteries and is definitely one of the most memorable moments in the original Paper Mario. After the mix-up in Shiver City, Mario and his party then progress to the Starborn Valley, but before they can reach it, they encounter Monstar. Monstar ends up being star kids in disguise. I mean, they have to have some kind of defense as they live out there in the freezing cold tundra. Mario then arrives in Starborn Valley, which is the place where star kids are born. This area is really relaxing as the music is calm and there's a lot of friendly characters to interact with. But after this area, Mario then makes his way to the Crystal Palace, which is the dungeon of this chapter. The palace is separated into two sections, and most of the puzzles are based off of that mechanic. The Crystal Palace gives off an eerie, almost foreboding vibe due to the music and the darker lighting of the palace. The palace also contains dupla ghosts, which can transform into other beings. While in the Crystal Palace, they transform into Mario and the partner currently available. The Dupla Ghosts would later be revisited in Thousand Year Door with Duplis, so it's cool to see that this idea was initially started here. Finally, at the end of the dungeon, you reach the Crystal King, which is the boss for this chapter, and holds the final Star Spirit. The Crystal King is very fun and somewhat challenging as a boss, as he can summon Crystal Bits, clone himself, and use a freeze ability. While the Crystal King is a very cool character, quite literally, it would have been nice to see his character fleshed out a little more as he only has a few lines of dialogue. But overall, the Shiver region of Paper Mario is packed full of memorable moments and amazing winter themed locations. Not only would I consider this my favorite winter level, but also my favorite area in the Paper Mario series. So overall, Let's look at what I consider to be the best winter levels in the games that I've played. They all stood out to me in different ways as they are either aesthetically distinct or have interesting level designs or mechanics. Is there any winter levels that you enjoy? Let me know down in the comments. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And make sure to check out my Discord server if you want to. Goodbye.